Hey guys, welcome to the channel and I am in Barcelona at the Mobile World Congress at the MediaTek booth where they have showcased some incredible technologies, be it generative AI, some ray tracing with gaming and some very, very cool tricks that you can do on your smartphone with your camera. But I'm not here to tell you everything that's happening. I have with me Dr. Finbar and he's going to tell us everything that MediaTek has showcased at Mobile World Congress and what MediaTek has in store for the future of smartphones in India. So let's go and talk to him. Okay, Dr. Finba, thank you so much for joining us today. And my first question is about that really, really cool auto demo that's going on at MWC out here. So can you talk a little bit about Dimensity Auto and what it means for MediaTek? Yeah, Dimensity Auto, like the automotive market, is a, is a brand new focus for us. Well, um, renewed focus, I would say. We've been in the automotive industry for a couple of years, but obviously with the announcement of the new partnership with NVIDIA last year, it's really kind of re-energized our focus on the uh, smart cockpit, smart cabin solutions. Um, so there's a lot of activity right now in the automotive market everywhere, of course, electrification, you know, the capabilities for connectivity, for multimedia, for cameras, for displays, for AI is just accelerating like crazy. So we're pretty excited about it. Um, we're gonna be talking more about this in the coming weeks, but you're gonna see, I think, a lot of high-end solutions coming from the MediaTek Dimensity um, auto platform, particularly on the cockpit side. But of course, we also have solutions for telematics, Wi-Fi connectivity that complement that as well. Anything that's coming to India anytime soon will be seen? We can <laughs> hope. I mean, inevitably, the automotive market doesn't move as fast as some of our other markets like smartphones and tablets and TVs, obviously, because the design cycles are longer, the longevity, the safety requirements, of course. So it's, it is a slower development cycle. Um, and we're just getting started with some of these, these new solutions that we'll be launching soon. But you know, I think the India market is also quite vibrant right now in the automotive market. There's a lot of development happening in India. So I'm sure in time we'll be able to talk about some exciting stuff in India. Absolutely, yes. Now, a lot of people in India are fairly shocked when I tell them that a lot of the IoT devices in their houses are actually powered by MediaTek. You mm -hmm. know, it could be a streaming stick, a smart speaker, a projector. Yep. Can, you, can you shed some light on IoT devices, anything on the horizon right now, or just anything you'd like to share in the IoT space? IoT is another big focus area growth for us going forward and I think again like automotive there's a lot of things that are changing in in the market right so you know I think when you look at sort of the core capabilities of media tech you know advanced multimedia SOCs leading process technology low power consumption latest arm cores but then also I think the AI effect is also becoming quite popular so when you have that capability that we have developed coming from our mobile devices we can of course deploy that into into other platforms and i think that's a big advantage because we've got like the camera capability the video capability and then couple that with the on-chip ai acceleration i think it's 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 very important platform we're seeing opportunity i would say in sort of two different areas of iot um, consumer applications you mentioned a few yeah. streaming media speakers smart doorbells, cameras, security, surveillance, exercise equipment. I sort of think of all of those as sort of consumer type applications. Um, but also longer term, I think there's opportunity in industrial applications, in enterprise applications, you know, things like, think about like advanced video conferencing facilities for office, you True. know, smart displays, those kind of capabilities. Um, it's a very rich, very diverse um, marketplace. And I think what's also exciting is it opens up the opportunity for new customers all over the world because yeah. it, it requires a different go-to-market and a different support model where a lot of it is done by the customers themselves. We deliver a standard platform. Yeah. So I think we'll see, I'm hoping we'll see Southeast Asia, India, Europe, LATAM, new customers developing with these platforms going forward for use cases that might be specific to that market. True. Now, now just shifting gears to mobile phones and we, we're seeing so many OEMs that are going to launch devices powered by the Dimensity 8000 and 7000 yeah. series. Can you shed some light on what is so, uh, you know, important, what is so magical about these two chipsets that we're going to see such a high volume of launches coming with these two? Yeah, there's, there's an exciting calendar ahead for yes. the, the next couple of weeks I've seen, um, particularly in, in, in the India market. I think it's two things. One, I mean, I think there's kind of a, an outside market effect, right, where 
you know, we're seeing 5G adoption going, accelerating like crazy in markets like India, Southeast Asia, other markets are, are, are beginning to adopt like crazy. Consumers are obviously looking at the devices that they buy, and even if they don't need 5G today, they're kind of future-proofing. But also I think the average price that the consumer is willing to pay for devices is continuously increasing because consumers are looking at holding those devices for longer. So I think consumers are making decisions that say, I'm going to invest now in more camera capability, more future-proof, more computing, more gaming capability, whatever their interest is in. So it's sort of pushing the requirements a little bit to the higher end, right? True. I think on the 8,000 and the 7,000, our targets are probably a little bit different for each one. The um, 8,000 series is obviously the premium part, just below flagship, right? And there, starting with the Dimensity 8000 a few years ago, MediaTek really delivered truly optimized new chipsets for that segment, right? So really optimizing the features, the cost, the power, the performance, rather than trying to trickle down flagships that were two years old or, or three years old. And we had a lot of success with that, and I think our customers have continued to build on that with the 8200 and now the Dimensity 8300 device. Of course, the Dimensity 8300 also adds some generative AI capabilities this year, which is kind of unique in, in that segment. On the other hand, the Dimensity 7000 series, like the Dimensity 7200, um, that is really, I think, feeding into kind of the high end of the mainstream, right? So this is really going to the heart of the market, where the volume is, and I think where the volume is probably going to be in markets like India, um, or Southeast Asia, or some of these, these other markets. And I think that to me is kind of classic media tech, right? Which is, you know, really delivering that excellent performance point, but in the mid-range for everybody, right? Um, and so I think that's why the Dimensity 7000 series will do so well. You're absolutely right, because there are 65 crore smartphone users in India, yeah. of which only 15 crore are uh, 5G users. Yeah, a so, long way to go. Yeah, a long way to go for a lot of people, and I'm sure their first touch point is going to be a MediaTek powered smartphone, yeah. considering the range that MediaTek caters to, right? Yeah. Now, I have to do the calculation in my head of crores, because it's <laughs> not hard. <laughs> yes, it's I, would, I would have to do the same thing for yeah, millions. Yeah, yeah, 100,000. <laughs> yeah. But l l let's just say that I think India has still a very, very large untapped potential, Absolutely. and it's and great to see. You know, MediaTek's market share recently also has been more than I 50%. Saw that. It's, it's so, quite exciting. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very exciting times ahead. But uh, of course, a lot of things are generated by your flagship mm -hmm. uh, uh, chipset, right? The 9300. Yeah, and, yeah. and you've already spoken to us so much about AI, be it in the content we've done yep. in our magazine, etc. So, I'm going to leave the floor open to you as my second last question is what would you like our audience to know about AI? What can they do on their phones when they pick up a MediaTek? AI powered phone? I think generative AI, which is what we're talking about, I mean, is really kind of still at the high end, right? So our flagship and our premium devices have capability now for doing this on, on chip. I think we're still at the very early stages, but I think there's kind of two main vectors that are probably leading the use cases today. One I call more the productivity. So this is, I think, if we and our customers do the job right, is going to make your smartphone, your device, a more useful personal assistant for you, right? So it's going to understand your data, it's going to understand what's on your device, it's going to understand all of the applications you use, it's going to understand how they can interface and help each other, and I think make that experience more intuitive. You know, you can call it the smart assistant, you can call it sort of the productivity, the summarization, all of those kind of yeah. capabilities built built in. Bridging the language barrier. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, interesting side story here, but one of the videos I just recorded for our use um, in English, we've just had AI turn it into me speaking Hindi. Now, I don't think it's something we want to share yet because it's probably, but it's amazing already like what the technology, so it's like, I, I had an Indian friend of mine in the States check it out because I said, yeah. is this any good, right? And he goes, the Hindi is very formal. Yeah. That's what he said. Um, but it's in my voice, in my accent, with my mouth moving as if I was speaking Hindi. And I don't speak a word of Hindi, so this is all yeah. generated. But it shows the potential, the potential of what, of what this can do. And, you know, I think in the article I talked about the dream would be sort of that universal translation, right, where anybody in the world can talk to anybody else in the world and build a bridge or build a connection. Like, if you think about the, the human element that that could bring, I think it's, it's amazing. Yeah. The, the second vector, I think, where AI is being developed, and we've got some applications here at MWC to sort of demonstrate this, is more in the 
consumer social fun kind of entertainment yeah. side of things. And again, I think that can be a very powerful driver for some of these applications as well, whether it's image generation, you know, avatars, personalization, stuff that people can share with their friends on their social networks, personalized content. Again, generating some of that, I think, can be very, very powerful. You know, it's like, it's not that long ago, you know, when people started launching emojis and people were like, this is never going to take off. And now look how important conversations happen in emojis. Look how, look how <laughs> important they are to, you know. Mm -hmm. So are we moving into sort of the next one of those kind of major breakthroughs or use cases? I think there's a lot of potential there for that, right? Yeah. So I think we're going to see a lot of this stuff deploy in the high-end devices in 2024. But it's important to recognize we're just at the start here, right? And I think, you know, our mission has always been to enhance and enrich everyone's lives, right? So how do we as an industry bring these capabilities, maybe scaled into more mainstream devices, into the mass market of devices? And I think that will happen over the next three, five years. Yeah. Okay, uh, my last question is your favorite showcase from today's show floor, but I'm going to go with mine first. Okay. Is, uh, you have this little space kind of a setup, yep. which is so miniature, it's literally this small if I can show it and we are going to show the footage of this. Yep. But the camera that we're showcasing to shoot it, it looks like almost a toy or a life size. Exactly, yeah. So I, I think that was an absolutely brilliant demo, but yeah. what's your favorite demo from today? I like that one. Um, because, <laughs> I mean, again, because I think the camera experience is so important for people and sort of yeah. the capabilities that, that it shows. I also like our video diffusion yes. uh, demo where, you know, I think everyone is familiar with kind of the standard stable diffusion where you type something and a picture is generated. Yeah. But this is actually happening in real time where you can kind of keep changing the text and the image keeps changing in real time as you type it. And we're running all of that on device using the AI capability of our Dimensity 9300 without any cloud connection. Yeah. So again, that kind of feeds into that fun video yeah. use cases that, that I was talking about. So I think that's probably my favorite so far. Yeah, actually that's a very good one. And just to explain it to our audience a little more is when, if you were to do something like this previously, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you needed access to the internet, to a cloud where whatever you inputted the text, it actually happened on a server sitting probably in Singapore or some other country but now it's happening locally on your device, which yep. from a business perspective means there's cost saving also yep. for you guys. Yep. And for the consumer, it means that you're not wasting a lot of internet bandwidth to get the data to go up and down. And it's so, instantaneous. Steve. And it's absolutely happening real time. You're, going to, you're probably seeing the demo of this while I'm talking about it as well. But thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Finbar. Is there anything else you would like to talk about uh, at MWC or MediaTek, which I may not have covered in these questions? No, I think we covered most of the, the, key, the key stuff. Like we're obviously day one, <laughs> so a lot can change, but it's an, exciting, it's an exciting year, I think, for us, for the industry. You know, I think the Gen AI capability is mm infusing some new life into the smartphone market right and you know people are trying to figure out where this is going to go but for me it has that feeling of magical technology so yeah. the industry is going to figure this out and i think we're going to see where we are in a year or two but it'll be an exciting future absolutely like arthur c clark said like any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, magic. and what we've experienced today at mediatek's booth has been nothing short <laughs> of absolutely super magical that's great so, yeah. that's a good that's a good one <laughs> thank yeah. you Yep, thank you so much. And for the rest of you that are watching, stay tuned. We have a lot of exciting announcements from Mobile World Congress and subscribe to the channel. For more, this is me, Samir, signing off. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now. Yeah.